the first year that we've been doing this activity has really allowed us to put our feet under the table, talk to a, a large number of people to establish where we can best add value. So I'm Peter Knook. I'm a visiting professor of innovation at the engineering department here in Cambridge University. Alongside myself, there's Sam Beale, and there's also Rick Mitchell. So the three of us are in this chair together. It's been quite humbling coming to Cambridge because there are innumerable things going on to encourage young people in their careers to be innovative. I take engineering to be a discipline which is to do with doing things in the real world. And innovation is the art of doing new things in the real world. It starts with invention, of course, but also selecting what to do, justifying what to do, finding out how to do it, taking other people with you. There are clearly people much better equipped than we are to teach the basic engineering disciplines. Our job is to say, does it make any commercial sense? Have you thought about how you might market this? Have you thought about whether there are patents that you should protect? Have you thought about which kind of partners you might need to exploit this idea? Have you thought about who you might sell this idea to if you can't exploit it yourself? These are the kinds of questions that we can ask because we work, either in my case, with a lot of startups or with a lot of bigger companies that might not occur to the people who are saying, is this mechanical engineering project going to be buildable? I mean, we can't add value to those things. There are plenty of other engineers around who can. My own background is that I started life as a physicist and I became an engineer and Fairly late on in my career, I moved out of research and development into management. And I'm very aware of the fact that I came into the management job rather ill-prepared. And looking back, just a little bit in my early education would have been so helpful later on when I had to be a manager and a director. It was all about optimising research for industrial uptake. So if you sort of split that down, it was dramatically cutting the time from research to large-scale implementation through the improved design of research and knowledge transfer without stifling creativity. We agreed when we got together that we would all work together, but in the first instance, we would take certain specialisations. I am interested in teaching of innovation to undergraduates. Peter is concentrating on postgraduates and researchers, and Sam is concentrating on the staff. The fact that we can help both with the process of bringing research grants so that research projects get funded and supported, that's one area where we can help. The other area where we've helped is in people who have, through their research, found ideas that they want to go and commercialise and execute, and whether that's then shaping the funding that they get for those activities, or whether it's advising those people on the viability that their idea really has some commercial merit. And that's where, with the three of us each having quite different backgrounds, we can bring something to the party. It seemed obvious that if you've got three visiting professors with the broad experience we have of industry, why don't we act as a red team, i.e. a non-advocate, independent group, bounce your ideas of us and we'll make some suggestions you know, about how to improve the bid. Because remember, this is all largely competitive. Finally, of course, it would be rather good if we can give more opportunities for students to participate in projects which are either actually happening outside of the department or at least are of strong interest and relevance to outside bodies. All of this will, I think, help our students to hit the ground running rather more when they come out of the fantastic technical and intellectual education that they get.